All right, guys, so the project of the day is here. Um, we have a CR500 head here. It's in pretty good shape. Um, believe it or not, you could get these all over eBay. I think I paid like 30 bucks for this one. Uh, I definitely had it for a while, though. Um, so my plan is to make my WR500 engine water-cooled. Uh, this is the idea I came up with. The CR500 head is close to the same bolt pattern. It's seven studs. Um, I believe you probably could just enlarge these holes with the drill bit and get away with it. Um, I might be overcomplicating this, but I don't want to take off any material on the inside of this. Um, not really sure why I'm so worried about it. I don't know if the water jacket is back there. Uh, not sure if you guys could see that, but... Anyway, it doesn't really need to be enlarged. It just needs to be lengthened outward just a hair. Or if this thing was cast brand new, these holes needed to just be slightly outboard. Um, so anyway, I have a 3 8 bit, uh, 3 8 end mill, sorry. Three flute, I believe. Um, yeah, that should be good for what I'm trying to do. So my idea is um, I have these quarter 20 screws here that... I'm going to try to set this up on the vise. I have this piece of steel in here, and that's going to be what these screws are going to screw into. Um, I'm going to mount this, and I'm going to catch two of the back holes. It almost makes a perfect triangle to the other side. I'll line it up like that so I could mill through it and elongate it, like I said. And then I'm going to use these two guys. Because of the taper on them, they'll align pretty good. One and two. Uh, I'm going to drill and tap those holes into the steel block. I'll, you know, semi-tighten it to the head first. Um, that'll hold me tight to the top of my vise. And then I'll lock the vise down. And I think that should be fine to hold it. I'll basically set this to the width that I want. You know, bore down and then mill it out just that hair. Um, and then I'll just do one at a time. After I do this one, I'll pull the head back up. And I'll pull these two screws out, and I'll spin it to the next two holes. This will still be aligned up. I'll bore that one, pull these two out, and then we just continue to go around until I get the whole thing done. Um, the last two, or last one probably, might not line up perfect because it will be elongated now. Um, one will be elongated, one will still be... Uh, a, a circle so anyway that last one i might have to just you know play with it a little bit to get it lined up pretty good but like i said this isn't anything uh very uh precise here so we should be good all right so i just moved the head out of the way i eyeball it you know as best as i can looking from the side here got out a set of transfer punches i'm gonna try and just guess here See if I can find the right size. Nope, too big. Uh, put those down. Let me go a little bit smaller. Uh, that's pretty close, a little loose. You guys get the idea. Just find the right size transfer punch. Come down, hit it with a hammer. Come down, hit it with a hammer. And then I'll come back and I'll drill and tap those holes out. All right, moving right along. You can see my two uh, center punches right there and there. Um, I'm going to just put in a drill chuck, just like that, and I'll come back. I should be able to just drill right to the size um, for a quarter 20. I'll look at the chart real quick. I'll drill it, tap it, and then I'm out the head.
got the holes drilled. Unfortunately, they're not dead in line with each other. Um, the way they are on the head, I guess because there's seven of them, they're slightly offset. Um, this one is a little bit in that direction. But anyway, it's gonna use a little oil, bring down the tap. And I'm gonna see if I could just do it by hand. Just turning it a little and coming back. If I have to, I'll put a wrench up on the top there. see those threads and maybe you can't but anyway um to do this to show you i went with a uh 1364 drill bit um they tend to uh cut nice and tight or at least tight enough what i'm doing here um you could also see i just basically brought the tap straight across and you could see how out of a line it is obviously i'm just gonna move the bed over and, and get a center. But I just wanted to show you, in case you guys end up doing something like this, um, those two back holes are not gonna be dead even with each other. So if I had to you know, put it into perspective for you, the head's gonna be turned a little bit in that direction. Okay, next I'm gonna tighten down a uh, quarter 20 Allens until I get this steel plate flush uh, with the bottom of the head. Uh, these are going to center, like I said before. I to do one handed, but you guys get the idea. I'm just going to get it flush and then open up the jaws. I machined the top of these jaws years ago, guys. Um, you can see they're kind of getting beat up uh, over the years, but I don't have too much material to go back down. Um, these jaws are very soft. I might just pull them off and flip them at some point and remachine them or maybe fill that in with weld. Uh, but having this uh, machine perfectly to the head um, of the mill comes in handy a lot. So basically, I'm gonna drop that in there. Because it's tight to this now, that's gonna hold it flush. Push this down, you know, get it to a good spot where it doesn't wobble, pretty much right there. Um, twist this around a little, but as I bring the jaws in, this is gonna center, and then I'm gonna bring the cutter over to this side. All right, that really worked out pretty good. The countersink, countersunk screws, sink screws, whatever the hell you call them. Um, because of the cone on the bottom, they tapered nice and they centered it. And I snugged them down, like I said, tightened the vise to it and then locked it down and I'm nice and tight on top of the jaws. No play whatsoever. So now I'm just going to... Work this guy over into position. Put that 3 8 uh, end mill in, like I said before. I might just go around and center it. Uh, it is going to enlarge the hole, boring it to 3 8 slightly. Um, I might actually try to just uh, center the first one and then go around and just basically drill them with the end mill uh, and just elongate them that tiny bit, or I should say enlarge them that tiny bit and see if it fits. If it doesn't, I could come back to the jig, I leave this bolted in, leave the steel plate bolted in, and I could just come back to the jig, lower it down, and then just mill out a hair on each one. All right, guys, so I ran into a problem with this hole on the backside near the mount. Um, I was actually hitting the fitting here uh, for the coolant. Um, so I just straightened the hole out with the end mill to start it, and then I'm coming in with a drill. I'm just gonna drill it through. Uh, it's just 3 8 so it's nothing crazy on this size here. And that's it.
guys. Here's the moment we've all been waiting for. You can see the holes came out pretty good. Um, definitely somewhat symmetrical, even though slightly oval. And let's see how, see if I can do this with one hand. All right, so you can see they're looking pretty good. Um, I think these should seal up pretty nice. Uh, I'm pretty much ju just doing this as like a rough prototype, guys. Um, my real idea is to come back, once I get the, um, the diameter of the bolt hole spacing on this, I could weld up the holes and then uh, come back on my rotary table, uh, figure out where each hole is going to be, come back and make the holes uh, extra precise. Um, but for now, this is actually really good in my opinion. Um, the nuts still have plenty of material here on the edges and the water jackets look fine on the inside. Now on to the next step is milling the fins off and then welding an aluminum tube to make up the water jackets.